Okay, I have my drippy self-portrait shapes. Go ahead and turn off the different paths. I'm working on this path here, and I'm gonna have that path overlap the big compound path that I've been doing. And I'll show you how you can merge them. Just like you can subtract, you can also add to existing paths. So before I finish with it, I want to get it to match a little bit better. I just use the pin tool. But now that I close the path, I can double click. And sometimes the easiest way is just add a point and drag it down. I want these curves to be pretty basic, so the easy way is just to line up the base, flatten out the tops. Add points at the verticals, straighten them out, and just do the curves at the tops. Flatten those out. Because mine is a little bit drippier, more organic looking, I can soften some of those verticals. Whoops, just plotted a lot of points. And I want to play with the thick and thin. Just make this feel a little bit looser. And if I want kind of a more open curve there, I can always round it, remember, and then move the point. So you have the rounding option as well. And I'm I'm not so used to that option. It's a newer tool, but that can save a lot of time if you don't want it to come to a sharp point. Hmm. Oops. So often when the curve is kind of confounding me, I'll just limit the number of anchor points that create it to help simplify it for myself. Remember, holding down Command lets you Change the angle and the length of the curve independently. Holding down shift helps you just change the length, but it makes the even the angle even between them so that they flow through a straight. So that's holding down shift. Why is that happening? There we go. Remember to pan around, hold down space bar. Double click to see the anchors, double click to turn straights into curves and vice versa. And just click and drag to move your points. Hmm. 
see. I'll just click on the path to add another anchor. And when you click and drag, you can move the path, or you can move the anchor on the path, or you can stretch out the whole path by moving the anchor. So there's just a lot of subtle differences that make a difference in the shape you want. Try using this rounding tool a little bit more on the straights. All right, pretty good on that side. All right, let's try that. So what's great about each path I create is that they can always be altered. They're always going to be vectors. They're always going to have those anchors. But they become more complicated when I add them to other shapes. So just like I subtracted these shapes from the overall I can add this shape to the overall, and I do that by holding down shift, selecting both of them to make sure they're not locked. Let's click off, okay. Hold down shift, select both of them, you get the options. So I'm no longer gonna subtract one from the other. I'm going to add them together, unite and add. And I told you before that once you subtract, you're not able to edit it again. That's because when you double click, I only see the outside, right? And even though they're united, it shows me where they overlap. But I was wrong. You can, you just have to click on each one individually. So if I wanna work on where this was cut out, I have to double click on that edge work on where this is cut out, I need to double click on that edge, which is great. So it means I could still change these anchor points if I needed to, even though they were added into a single compound path with what else I was doing. Ah, just happened. Somehow I closed it, but I'm opening it again. Hopefully it saved everything. Okay, so now, very simple here. I just have my sketch. I just have that path and I just have this path. So it's just three fairly complicated cutouts or two fairly complicated cutouts. So let me rough in these other shapes quickly. I'm just going to use the shape tool. Do a nice vertical oval. Change it to black.
Good. I'll do another oval. Put it on its side. Double click. Delete the bottom anchor point. Turns it into a half. And then I can rotate it. Once I see the kind of transform box around it, I just click outside. Rotate. Double click and play with the flatness of the bottom, holding down Command, changing the angle and the length of the bottom curves on one side of the anchor. I can take its opacity down so I can see the sketch a little bit better. And I'm pretty much right on, but I can just tweak. I think it needs it. The other curves on the other side holding down command. I might just want to make it clean like that, turn those bottoms into straights. See how that looks without the sketch on. I think I like it slightly softened. Okay. Next. So this is a, an instance where it looks pretty uniform and I'll just show you, I could just do something with the pen tool. Curve it. And then leave it open. I'm gonna just click enter and instead of closing it, just leave it open and then just up the size of the border but then is there any way to round the edges not really so that's one limitation of just using the border especially at the edges when they're open they have to be really clean so i'm still going to be better off just using the pen tool and drawing around it. Don't update flash. Right. Ah. Okay, so I'm gonna start here, go to the top of the curve, go down to here. Bottom of the curve. It's a lot too, just rounding an edge. There to there, the bottom of the curve. To there, okay. Now, this gives me the tools I need to make that kind of rounded, curved rectangle that I want and keep it pretty simple. That's drawing each point. I'm going to show you a third way to do it, too. That's maybe even easier. So you see that the pin tool really, really customizes every, every choice, gives you full control of it, especially where curves are involved. But it sometimes doesn't look very uniform. So if I want the nose to look kind of uniform, this is another.